Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome to today's video, makeup techniques you're doing wrong. If you would like to see how you can step up your makeup game and all the possible steps that you're doing wrong and how you can improve them, make sure to keep on watching. And don't forget to leave a comment down below what you think about this video and what you think I should do next as well. And don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already. And don't forget to hit that notification button so that you're notified every single time I drop a new video. But anyways, let's get right into the video. Hello. So I have a lot of makeup on right now. No, I have no makeup on, obviously. I don't know if you guys could tell me that. But I might grab some products uh, to show you guys, for example, like, so some things I might um, show you like an application or like an example of bad and good. Some I might not just because it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> so you could just like see what I mean by what I'm talking about. But one of the biggest techniques that I see a lot of people doing wrong is how they hold their makeup brushes when they're applying eyeshadow. So for example, here I just have a Morphe 330 blending brush. A lot of people will hold the brush like this when they're putting pigment on their eye and you do not want to hold the brush like that, <laughs> especially if you're blending. So what the rule for a brush is remember this like when we do that it's gonna be like oh my god look the <laughs> is broke mentally i'm so fucking crazy i 100 percent believe that the rule i'm just this is just another brush this is a morphe m124 brush if you're packing on pigment like um a shimmer or a metallic or anything like that you want to use a more close uh grip on the brush so that way you have more pressure and more pressure is going to equal more pigment and more payoff of that color so yes when you're applying something like a metallic over here to your lid you would use the brush really close or if you're put if you're um putting some color down on your lower lid you could also do this really close when you're doing your eyeliner you would be really close and you would hold the brush really close to the end like this so that you have more control and as well as more pressure is applied to the brush therefore more pigment will come off for whatever you're doing so back to um blending brushes so here i just have a morphe 518 brush and then the other brush i had before so same goes for this guy so these brushes you would not use these brushes close because it just does not make sense you want to use these brushes by the end because the end i don't know why i have my big gear. the end is going to give you a nice blend and it's going to be a much light lighter pressure because you're blending you, you're not placing pigment so I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm not hollering at you. What you would do is, you know, you would blend and hold the brush all the way down here to allow for a seamless blend instead of holding it right here where that's very, very heavy, you know? But, oh God, that has pigment on it and it's all on my eye. <laughs> that's funny. I forgot my brushes have pigment, so never mind the orange around my eyes now. But yeah, what I was saying. So going back to this brush because I don't think it actually has anything on it. So what I was saying, so you want to hold the brush from the end when you're blending or for example, you would use maybe a highlight. Highlighting is another thing that you don't use as much pressure on. So when you're using a highlighter, you can also use it very light all the way at the end. Also when you're doing contouring, you would hold it at the end unless you're doing a very harsh contour as you guys have seen like I do the contour before so and I go very harsh so I use it a little bit more close if you're using if you're doing a regular contour or like most people do you know you would use it you would hold the brush down here to get that lighter pressure okay so my next technique that a lot of people do wrong so my favorite thing in the whole entire world is brows they're my favorite thing to do literally brows make the face when you do people's brows sometimes i've had clients cry when i do their eyebrows because like it just makes you look that much better so a big mistake that a lot of people will do this one we're gonna do because this is a big mistake so your brows have to be sisters not twins because obviously they're not gonna be twins but they have to be sisters you know they have to line up correctly in the right spots had to end in the right spots you have to have the arch in the right spots all that type of stuff what i see people do is when people are doing their eyebrows i've seen them square off their brows and that's simply just not what you want to do so basically this is what people do 
So I'm just going to take my Anastasia Beverly Hills Pomade and I'm just going to go in with a Morphe X Jeffree Star JS7 brush. I'm just going to take some of that pomade and people, I'm just going to go in and people usually will just straight up box off their brow. And this is not the thing you want to do. So do you see what I have done here? And then they will go in and fill it, you know, like this or something. And they will call that a brow. So I'm going to do it a little bit better, obviously. So because you guys are going to be like, well, you're not doing it right anyway. So let me do it, I guess. How you guys would consider right making hair strokes and everything. So this is what I see a lot of people do. And you just don't want to do this because it looks so unnatural. It looks so sharp. It doesn't even look brow-like at all. And it just brings, it makes your brow bone so heavy because it's so intense. And it just brings everything in on your face and you just don't want that. Like drawing that box brought in my eyebrows so much. That's the James Charles brow right there. Do not, don't do that. We just... <laughs> Zone zoo it. Don't, don't, don't zoo it. Zone, zone zoo it. <laughs> so I'm gonna, on this side, I'm gonna show you guys what you should do. Now, I have very thick brows, obviously, because I'm a guy. But what you wanna do is you wanna have your brows fade from light to dark because that's how brows are supposed to go. They get light and they get very dark. They ombre. Okay, so I'm gonna take more of the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade on the same brush because you could use the same brush. And what I like to do is I like to start in the, almost like right here, almost where the arch happens. Cause right there you could start to darken and line it up and darken more to the outer and start to see the shape of the brow that you're going for. And then you can get into the attention spots. Like if you're missing up here, you know, hit that. But you never want to place any pigment really over here. Maybe if you have a bald spot, you can place a little, but you don't want to make any harsh lines in the front of your brows because that's where the least amount of hair and product should be. Do not block off your brows. And don't block off your brows and then blend them in with a beauty blender, that's even worse. So I'm just gonna do my brows real quick here so you guys can see. And it's gonna be a little difficult for you guys to see like how my eyebrows have been done because they're already really dark. So you guys aren't gonna really notice the difference. I'm just doing them for like intensive purposes to show you guys like and what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of pigment and you see how I'm brushing the brows that's one blending that pigment I just placed down and it's also allowing it to disperse instead of it again you don't want harsh lines you do not want harsh lines at all you want your brows to look natural and then so I started on the bottom and you see that's been lined so now I'm gonna go to the top end so the opposite end right here if I need any I'm just gonna line that and then same thing, brush it down, blending out. And then you start moving to your next problem area. So now let's say I want to go a little bit more over here to the top, right? I'm just gonna place a little bit of pigment right there. And same thing, blend it out. But you see how I'm going in with such a small amount. Again, I have a lot of brow hairs, so I don't wanna like going crazy. You want it to be very forgivable so that if you have to change something or you went a little too dark you can fix it instead of just dipping into the pomade because then your brows are fucked so don't do this <laughs> try to do this you see how my brow is like boom like it's like there i look like i'm angry like automatically i look angry my brow looks huge it looks fat it looks thick and this just looks like natural. It looks wispy. You can see like my brow bone is being more of the center of attention where it lifts instead of it just being like boom, which I hate this. Don't zone zoo it, you know? Okay, ready for this one? I don't have any because I don't have it, <laughs> but I'm gonna use other ones that I have. So Mac Fix Plus is a very well-known spray in the makeup community and there's a lot of people 
who will say like you know max fix plus just isn't working for me like it's really not setting my foundation and my makeup and i found this so funny because i did not think that people thought mac fix plus was a setting spray because it is not a setting spray and not only is mac fix plus not a setting spray um for setting spray uh, a lot of people think here i just have the morphe x jeffree star setting spray and the morphe setting spray a lot of people think that setting spray will increase the longevity of your makeup and how long your makeup will last that is simply not true setting spray is more um to give you a natural finish when when you've laid down all these different things your foundation your concealer and you baked and all this stuff you want to bring everything together and make everything settle into your face and make everything kind of look and mimic skin so what we do is after we're complete we like to you know give a complete setting spray so that everything settles completely sits in the face everything looks a little bit more realistic like skin and stuff like that and that way you get a nice beautiful finish it is in no way supposed to make your makeup last longer like the urban decay all-nighter spray a lot of people will not leave the house without setting their makeup without that first they really think it's gonna make their makeup last all night it's in the name so okay and for the mac fix plus situation mac fix plus is to fix and repair anything on your face it, hence the name so for example if you have a cracked area like maybe your concealer or your foundation on your nose got dry and you need to fix it you can spray a little bit of mac fix plus and it will moisturize it up and like put more moisture into the product and it would revive the product that way you know you could buff it back into the face and then it looks natural again or maybe if you've just had a makeup application on for like maybe three hours you want to take some mac fix plus spray it over your face get that dewy finish again you know but it's in no way going to set your makeup it's not going to make your makeup last longer so don't even <laughs> bother doing that that's all with primer you know that is all if you're using what primer and how are you using it which is coming up so next my favorite topic beauty blenders so beauty blenders the biggest mistake i see people do and it's 2020 and people are still doing this people will drag their beauty blenders on their face like they will get their foundation boom 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 put it on the beauty blender and then they'll start doing this and then they're wondering why their makeup comes out bad. You do not want to drag your beauty blender because you're just dragging all that product everywhere and you're not blending it at all. When you use a beauty blender, the main tool is the bounce of it. See how bouncy it is? Well, mine is not wet, so it's not that bouncy. But when they're moist, they're very bouncy. So when you do use a beauty blender, you always want to bounce always you bounce on the skin bounce in your foundation bounce in your concealer that way you get a nice finish it's completely blended into the skin and it looks really really natural don't dry never dry this one might hurt some people sorry if you feel attacked after this one but bronzer is not a form of contour oh excuse me please stop saying that you're gonna contour with the bronzer bronzer brings warmth to the skin it gives it a you know like a sun kissed vibe like you were just in miami beach contour has a gray tone shadow to mimic bone structure of the face and you know look like shadows on your face not bronzer so please please stop <laughs> stop contouring with bronzer it's not a thing so i'm probably gonna make more episodes of like these top beauty techniques that you are doing wrong but um that was all the techniques for the first video so hope you guys like this video i took a little bit of a step from doing some makeup you know we're gonna be doing different stuff on this channel not just me freaking reviewing something all the time i know that gets kind of boring but i do got some reviews coming hot like this one is coming hot and I got another review coming in the mail that's gonna be even hotter 
so make sure you guys stay tuned make sure you check out Deek of the podcast the link will be in the description down below it is available on anchor spotify and apple Podcasts, and everywhere else that podcasts are available we release episodes every monday and i believe when you guys are watching this episode three should be out so yeah i hope you guys enjoy and i'll catch you guys on the next one welcome to or welcome back to my channel and by the way there is makeup on my sweater cuz I'm an idiot and I was like I'm gonna wear this sweater but I'm a dumbass cuz my skin is mad dark and you can tell so act like it's not there but make sure you guys leave a like on this video and make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and make sure you guys hit that notification bell so you guys know every time I drop a video and are notified a giveaway is coming soon I'm gonna say that in every video <laughs> So you guys are like, where's the freaking giveaway already? So let's get right into the videos. On today's video, we are going to be doing a mini controversy palette review from Jeffree Star Cosmetics X Shane Dawson. This retails for $28 on the Jeffree Star Cosmetics website. It is still sold out. I think uh, it'll probably be sold out until 2021, like to be honest with you. But you guys saw my last video. This is what the palette looks like. And then I'm just gonna show you guys a color story again mine fell and broke so this is the color story we have we have flat earth cry on my couch my boyfriend's purse controversy diet root beer my apology exposed canceled and the simulation the color story I mean, it depends who you are. For some people, this color story could be like really confusing, but I don't really think it is. It's pretty evident to me, like what the color story is here. But we're not gonna do any swatches. I don't really do swatches. I also have the Shane Gloss in the gloss lip gloss, you know, from Jeffrey Star Cosmetics as well. We're gonna be checking. We're gonna be checking that out too if it's not 